We had news out of the SEC today, and LSU, their NCAA uh, sanctions were handed down today, and this is a very interesting one. Uh, obviously, when that news broke, everybody perks their ears up, and they automatically start thinking, hmm, okay, what well, is this in regards to basketball? Is this in regards to da 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 Well, obviously, we are a college football show here at Winning Cures Everything, so we are going to focus on football. And here is what went down, pulling up the tweet from Brody Miller, and Brody uh, says, LSU has been given one year of probation, a $5,000 self-imposed fine, a limit of 55 official visits during the current academic year, along with other penalties. Uh, it says, former LSU assistant James Craig was given a three-year show cause. Now, this is where it's funny, right? Shea Dixon, of course, um, Shea Dixon is at On3 Sports. He covers LSU recruiting, etc. He said, LSU had already self-imposed nearly everything that was on this NCAA list, beginning with the prior regime. They've also already been operating under the number set at 55 official visits. Nothing of real note uh, when it comes to moving forward. So there's really nothing that's a big deal about this NCAA probation for LSU other than it does show that it, in some cases it pays to cheat, right? The NCAA found that James Craig committed a level two violation, meaning that LSU can bring to its court appeal that it might have had to cause, uh, they might have had cause to fire James Craig last summer. They can potentially avoid paying the five hundred thousand dollars that they owe him. We have seen this over and over and over again: schools using NCAA violations in order to get out of paying buyouts. We saw it with Kansas, what they tried to do with David Beatty before they hired Les Miles. We saw it with Tennessee, with uh, Jeremy Pruitt, and there's still lawsuits and everything else going on with that. Um, but they are using these NCAA violations in order to get out of paying these gigantic buyouts. And it's insane. It's absolutely insane to me that it's even a possibility for them to do this. And yet, the people that wrote these contracts are doing a good job of, uh, what's the word? They are, we'll call it CYA, right? That's exactly what they're doing. They are making sure that if they want to get out of a contract because it's not working, there are a lot of loopholes. There are a lot of different clauses that they can point to. And they can find a way to get out of paying that money. It's not great for coaches. Don't get me wrong. But the fact that these coaches are making just gargantuan sums of money, uh, totally fair. You better play by the rules. Now, that's the that's the catch-22, right? Play by the rules, probably not going to win. Not going to be as effective winning, at least not at these big-time programs. Uh, you don't play by the rules, and you get busted, and you're not winning, eh, you might not get your money when you get bought out. Just saying, which in that case, I guess it wouldn't technically be a buyout. You wouldn't be getting bought out at all. you just get fired. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.